Post-traumatic stress disorder, more commonly known as PTSD, is a mental health condition that develops after being exposed to trauma. This trauma could be a wide range of things, well-known examples being violence, injury and death, like in a war, but also sexual assault. The threat of injury, natural disasters and childhood abuse are also examples. It is estimated that up to 80% of people will experience a traumatic event in their lives, and between 5 and 10% of these will go on to develop PTSD. The signs and symptoms are divided into categories, which ultimately also make up the criteria for the diagnosis. First is the stressor itself. This could either be directly to the patient or by witnessing the trauma, indirectly by having exposure to details of the event, such as working in the police, or hearing that the trauma has happened to a loved one. Then there are intrusive symptoms, such as recurrent thoughts related to the trauma. These could be distressing nightmares, dissociative reactions such as flashbacks, which can include a complete lack of awareness of surroundings. Also included here is intense distress on exposure to reminders, including physical manifestations like tachycardia and hypertension. Then there is avoidance, where people avoid stimuli related to the event or reminders such as people or places. Mood and cognitive alterations are common, such as being unable to recall certain aspects, a distorted sense of self or cognition in which they blame themselves for the event, fear and guilt are also common, and anhedonia, which is a reduction in activities that were previously enjoyable. Other symptoms related to reactivity are common, including aggressive behaviour with little to no trigger, hypervigilance, difficulty in concentrating or sleeping, and reckless behaviour. Based on these, a diagnosis can be made according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual 5th edition. The criteria for the trauma must be met, and then there must be one or more intrusive symptoms, avoidance symptoms, two or more for negative alteration in mood, and two or more in alterations in arousal and reactivity. Additionally, it must also have lasted for more than one month, it must cause impairment in functioning in social, school or occupational life, and it cannot be due to substances or another medical condition. In cases where the symptoms are present and have lasted less than one month, it is defined as an acute stress disorder. There is also complex PTSD, which is mostly seen in patients exposed to prolonged trauma, and in addition to the symptoms of PTSD, they also experience emotional dysregulation and a more disturbed sense of identity. The exact reason this happens is not clear. However, changes in neurotransmitters and hormones are thought to cause the symptoms. In particular, disturbances in the hypothalamic pituitary axis and adrenergic systems. Normally, corticotropin-releasing hormone is released from the hypothalamus, which travels to the anterior pituitary and causes release of adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH. This then causes release of cortisol from the adrenal glands that goes on to act systemically. Cortisol then suppresses CRH and ACTH levels via negative feedback. In PTSD, however, cortisol levels are low while CRH levels remain high. The high CRH levels stimulate noradrenaline, giving an increased sympathetic nervous system response, the system typically engaged in fight or flight reactions. This can manifest as tachycardia, hypertension, an increased startle response and increased arousal. Some studies also report a reduction in GABA activity and an increase in glutamate activity, which have both been linked to dissociation and derealization. The risk of developing PTSD seems to be higher in females, in people with pre-existing mental illnesses like anxiety or depression, 
childhood adversities, or a lack of social support. The type and severity of the trauma also plays a role, with assault-based traumas rather than non-assault traumas like natural disasters being more likely to cause PTSD. It is estimated that 22% of war-related trauma survivors develop PTSD and 19% of rape victims. It can also develop as a result of life-threatening illness such as after an admission to the intensive care unit or a diagnosis of cancer. We mentioned indirect or secondary trauma, where people are not directly exposed to the trauma themselves. Healthcare workers are frequently exposed to secondary trauma and are at the highest risk. PTSD itself can also predispose to other conditions like substance abuse. The first line therapy is psychotherapy, including cognitive behavioural therapy, which has been shown to be effective in between 60 and 80% of cases. It is a way of helping to adjust negative thoughts, feelings and behaviours that prevent patients from enjoying a good quality of life. Eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, known as EMDR, is another option involving moving the eyes alongside audio tones to stimulate the brain which helps process debilitating and traumatic memories. Medications are also useful, including antidepressants and anxiolytics, although have not been shown to be more effective than psychotherapy. Options include selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like paroxetine and sertraline, or serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors like venlafaxine as first line. Clonidine is an alpha agonist used in reducing trauma-related nightmares, and trazodone or promethazine are options for insomnia. Some studies have also shown a better outcome in patients if antipsychotics like risperidone are added to the antidepressant therapy.